Dune is an incredibly interesting book in an even more bizarre series. It's always stood tall as a powerhouse in the genre of operatic science fiction, though public perception of the work and what it means has changed a lot with the recent release of the movies. While the films in the book differ in a lot of ways, which I won't be touching on in this video, there is one scene that remained phenomenal in both. Paul facing the Reverend Mother and her Gom Jabbar. What we have in this scene is a box of unknowable pain, and a poison that ends only animals. It's science fiction fare in the streets, but it's hyper-symbolic in the sheets. Let's start with the poison that kills only animals. The high-handed enemy, the Gom Jabbar. I hope it comes as no surprise when I tell you that the Gom Jabbar works as well on humans as it does on animals. After all, it wouldn't be very threatening to Paul if he was immune in virtue of his speciation. So, quite obviously then, Frank Herbert, the author of Dune, is going for a bit of cheeky symbolism. If Paul fails this test and pulls his hand out of the box of a noble pain, he is, consequently, no different than an animal, and a dead one at that. This is very shallow on the iceberg of Dune thought, Though it still begs the question, what does it mean to be an animal in the world of Dune? But before I answer that, let's discuss something else. The Bene Gesserit. The Bene Gesserit are weird. They're an ancient organization of women that have used everything from technology to magic, secrets to obvious truths, and things like the Gom Jabbar and the unknowable Box of Pain to get their way. We learn from very early on that they have an agenda to save humanity from itself. Well, ostensibly, at least. They desire the creation and manifestation of the Kwisatz Haderach, a kind of messianic figure that should be able to keep the universe in one piece. And they're willing to gatekeep Gaslight, Girlboss, and Gom Jabbar just about anything in their way so long as it gets them closer to their goal. Anyone that breaks from their path to rightness, which admittedly is very rare, they're very good at what they do, is not, by their estimation, on the side of humanity, and is an animal. Consider their near abandonment of Jessica after she gave birth to Paul instead of a daughter. Paul is a millennia-long plan thrust into chaos made real, a should-be daughter and an animal, for now, according to them. The Gom Jabbar kills only animals, and to start to prove that he's more than a beast in all of this, he'll have to survive it. But that's not an easy task. Remember that box of unknowable pain? Yeah, he's going through it. His right hand is experiencing intense pain inside an unnamed box. If he flinches, he's dead. If he stays still, he suffers. The Reverend Mother is teaching Paul that to live is to suffer, but there's more symbolism here too. It's like that quote, let your left hand know not what your right hand is doing. It's a somewhat trite quote, but quite relevant for us here. See, as Paul is experiencing this terrible pain in his right hand, his nails dig bloody marks into his left, which he doesn't realize until his right hand comes out unscathed from the box. In the process of affirming his humanity over the Gom Jabbar, he's unknowingly sacrificed his left hand for his right. The right hand knows not what the left hand is doing, and the left is leaving bloody scars while the right is preoccupied by the worldly. So what then does this test even prove? I mean, Paul is still succumbing to the basic, primal, animalistic urge to clench and seize in the face of pain. The Reverend Mother says that a human can override any nerve in the body, that they test on humans to set them free. Do they really? The entire Bene Gesserit ideal can be summed up with the ends justify the means, and continued existence through control. Time and time again they sacrifice the freedoms of humanity, not the humans of their twisted definition, mind you. 
for their terrible purpose. Consider what they did to the Fremen, the birthing of a false prophecy and the religious tyranny over a society. The right hand seeks freedom from pain, refuses to withdraw for fear of denigration, and in the process sacrifices the flesh of the living. If the human can override any nerve in the body and thus reduce this pain to nothing, what does this test prove? That those with Bene Gesserit training, those that have undergone this process, a special class of person that force themselves to experience pain, are more deserving of freedom uniquely separate from the rest, from the beasts. Who is the Bene Gesserit really hoping to save? The Bene Gesserit claim that humanity is doomed without them, that they have a valuable purpose. But I'm not so sure that's the case. The world, the universe, may very well have lived and thrived just as well without the Bene Gesserit. The Fallout show has, in some way, revitalized discussion of the franchise. Spoilers ahead, of course. It explores in more detail than we've ever gotten before the dastardly deeds of vault -Tec, a sort of rules for thee but not for me sort of thing. They're doing horrible vault experiments for those that can't afford the luxury of a good one. The show caps off a decade-long discussion about questions regarding the Great War, the bombs dropped, and vault -Tec's role in all of that. It confirms, though, Todd Howard could always pull a Todd Howard that vault Tech did it. That they subjected the world to fire and hell for a quick buck. That they made the right hand face the box of unknowable pain. They created an enemy, an artificial kind, while the left, the flesh, suffers truly. They manufactured a special class of humans that have passed the test of the Gom Jabbar that are given unique privilege over the animals, over the survivors, and they do all of this under the guise of salvation for all. There's admittedly a lot I'd like to say about the Fallout games and the show, but I'll save it for a future video. The point is this. The grand metaphor being painted by Herbert here is seen everywhere from media to reality. Take, for example, the curious case of Elon Musk. Who is really going to find freedom from a polluted, wasteland-driven Earth in Elon's rockets? Ignore the fact he's hoping that you don't realize the very ones that will be going up on those rockets are the ones that damned the world in the first place. And I would argue that he is included in such a list, though for many, many reasons beyond the scope of this video. He may yet have passed the test of the Gom Jabbar in the capitalist experiment and become rich and lauded. He may still even succeed in colonizing Mars, but that's all it will be, a reflection of times colonial, a solution to a problem that he himself has made. Thus we must ask, is government the home of humanity when geopolitics and war make the common folk suffer for lofty, prideful, and egoistic, quote-unquote, human desires? Maybe what Frank Herbert is telling us is that it's okay from time to time to withdraw one's hand and become an animal. Or better yet, not to impose these tests in the first place. They're artificial markers for deciding who is good and who is bad. When in reality, that human pride, that urge to prove ourselves better than beasts, is the killer that leaves the left hand wounded as the right hand exposes itself to an illusory, artificial, and forced pain. Thanks for listening. If there's anything else you'd like to hear me talk about, whether that's Fallout or more Dune or something else entirely, please feel free to let me know.